I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Uh, I would like to start a new topic. Um, it's uh, about systems of trigonometric equations. Well, first of all, about the concept. Um, what is a systems? What what are the systems of trigonometric equations? Well, you know that trigonometric equation is equation which has some trigonometric functions involved, right? So systems uh, of trigonometric equations are exactly similar. It's some systems of equations with more than one unknown, and uh, uh, certain trigonometric functions are involved in this system. Now, um, is there any general methodology of solving the systems of trigonometric equations? Mm, well, no, but regularly, you know, the substitution method, um, which is similar to substitution method in, in other systems, in algebraic systems, um, is usually something which might be involved, not necessarily. Um, actually, the more interesting examples of uh, systems of trigonometric equations do contain the substitution as part of it, but that's the most trivial part. The most interesting part starts after the substitution is done, and you have to basically solve certain trigonometric equations. So um, the best way to, to learn about systems of trigonometric equations is to solve them. And you know my recipe for, for all kinds of learning math is just solve problems. The more you do, the more difficult the problems are, the more your mind is prepared for an unknown, whatever you can meet in your real practical life. And uh, that's the only recipe which I have in, in, in this particular case. So um, no particular skills will be developed by um, solving trigonometric equations or systems of trigonometric equations. It's just development of your mind, your creativity, your critical abilities, your analytical abilities, your ingenuity and intelligence. All right, so um, I would like to present one particular system, and I will just solve it. Um, and then there will be certain problems um, which I will just, you know, continue analyzing and explaining, etc. So this particular lecture will be about one particular problem, one particular system of trigonometric equations, and uh, let's just follow the logic of this. Uh, the system is as follows. a sine x plus b cosine y equals c and x plus y equals d. So, two trigonometric equations with two variables, x and y, and as you see, there are some trigonometric functions involved, which allows us to basically say that, okay, this is a system of trigonometric equations. Although only one of them is really trigonometric, and another is more of traditional algebraic form. Now, this is one of the simplest examples, and uh, it's basically solved using the regular substitution um, method which uh, you might imagine would, would, would do in this particular case. So what do we do? Uh, we resolve uh, the uh, second equation for y in terms of x, which is this, and substitute into the top equation to get one trigonometric equation with one unknown x. After we define x, then we can just define y as well. So, what kind of trigonometric equation will be as a result? a sine of x plus b cosine of d minus x equals c. Now, obviously, I cannot solve it without certain manipulations. And the first manipulation, which basically uh, is natural, is to open up cosine of the difference between two angles. So it will be a sine x plus b cosine d cosine x plus b sine d 
sine x equals c. Alright? Cosine of the difference is cosine cosine plus sine sine, and the coefficient b goes to both sides. Now, if um, if you remember in one of the lectures which is which was dedicated to trigonometric equations, I was solving equation uh, of uh, like p sine x plus q cosine x equals whatever a I don't know. Um, and the way how I solved this equation was um, I multiply and divide this by uh, r equals to square root of p square plus q square. So I have r p over r sine x plus q over r cosine x equals a and then I basically interpreted p over r as sine of some angle and q over r as a cosine of the same angle and using this it is possible, it was possible. So. Let me remind you the whole technique actually in details. And then I will apply it to this guy. But first we have to convert it into this form. So we bring together everything about sine x and about cosine x, right? So it's b cosine d cosine x plus a plus b sine d sine x equals c. So basically, I will call this p and this q. These are constants, right? because d is a constant, and a is a constant, and b is a constant. So they are known constants. So instead of you know going into large formulas, I'll just use the letters p and q. p signifies b cosine d, and q signifies a plus b sine d. So what I have is p cosine x plus q sine x equals c. How to solve this equation? As I was saying before, um, I will have r equals to square root of p square plus q square. So if I'm talking about solving this equation, I presume that they are not at the same time equal to zero, because otherwise it's not an equation. So that's why r is not equal to zero, obviously. Now, p over r... Um, can be a cosine of some angle phi, and q over r can be a sine of this angle phi. How can I find this angle phi? Well, let's think about this way. If both p and q are positive, now r is always positive, so cosine and sine are positive. Are positive. Now, cosine, as you remember, is abscissa of this point. This is cosine. And this is an ordinate is a sine. If this is a unit circle, and this is an angle phi. All right? So if P and Q are positive, then I can actually say that the phi can be arc cosine of uh, p over r. Actually, you know what? Let me just invent one particular angle, alpha, which is arc sine of absolute value of p over r. 
So absolute value is always positive. OK? Absolute value is always positive. So I always have this angle alpha. So it's not phi, it's alpha. Now, angle phi is defined by these um, uh, identities. So now we have different uh, cases. If uh, P greater or equal to 0 and Q greater or equal to 0, then my angle phi is equal exactly alpha, because it's in the first quarter. Now, if P, which is abscissa, is greater uh, or equal to 0, but Q is less than 0, so it's here. So abscissa P is greater than 0, and ordinate is less than 0. Then phi is equal to minus alpha. Right? This is alpha. This is alpha, this is minus alpha. Now, if P is less than 0 and Q is greater than or equal to 0, uh, P is here, so it's here. So angle phi is equal to pi minus alpha. And finally, if both of them are negative, then phi is equal to, it's here, pi plus alpha, right? So if alpha is defined as this, where absolute value of p is always positive, that's why alpha is here. Then, whenever my whatever my p and q are, I can always find angle phi using the angle alpha and pi in this particular case, depending on p and q. And definitely, sine and cosine of phi would be whatever I'm looking for. Now, having that angle phi, which is calculated as through alpha and these inequalities. I can say that here, instead of this particular um, equation, I can put R cosine phi, cosine x, plus sine phi, sine x equals c. Because p over r is cosine phi, and q over r is sine phi, right? So r is a factor multiplier, factor it out from which we can always see that cosine of x minus phi, because that's exactly what's in these parentheses, is equal to c over r. Which brings us to solution. x is equal to phi plus uh, minus r cosine of c over r plus 2 pi n. Right? So x minus phi is equal to arc cosine plus minus arc cosine of c over r and plus p 2 p. And then phi should be added. Basically, that's the solution. That's x, and then the d uh, minus x would be y, obviously. So y is equal to d minus phi. And since it's plus or minus, doesn't really matter what I, in what order I put it. And n is any integer, so again, it doesn't really matter whether it's plus or minus. So any pair of x and y, um, which is calculated, actually, you know what? I don't even have to use the same letter n. I can use letter anything else, because it's still a period anyway, right? Okay, all right. Oh, no, no. And it's important here. And in this case, I should really put minus, because it's minus. So x plus y would always be 
uh, B. I really have to preserve the sign, so it's not plus minus, it's minus plus, right? Because it's D minus X, so I have to reverse all the signs. Minus phi, instead of plus minus, I should put minus plus, and instead of this plus minus, where N is any integer number, obviously. Okay, now X plus Y would be equal to, to D, but as far as this relationship, it doesn't really matter about 2 pi n, uh, 2 pi n, because it's a periodic function. All right, so that's the solution. Um, what's interesting is it's a relatively simple system, because all I did was I substituted the uh, unknown to, to the first equation, reducing the system of two equations with two unknown uh, to uh, one equation with one unknown. And that latter uh, was actually kind of the thing which we used to solve before. Uh, it's, it's this type, cosine and sine with some coefficients. Um, I will probably uh, uh, introduce to you some more special techniques whenever uh, we will go through program, pr problems um, related to systems of equations. And again, the more problems we solve, the more these special techniques um, you will absorb. And that's not, you know, it, it's, just the, it, it's just the tools. Um, you don't have to really like remember it by heart or anything like that. But if you try to do it yourself first before listening to my explanations, um, it will definitely enrich your, um, your repertoire of your techniques which you can use. So I definitely suggest you to go again maybe through this example as well, just by yourself. Uh, and then for whatever problems will be introduced in this topic, try to solve it themselves and, uh, and then listen to the lectures. Well, that's it for today. Don't forget that Unizor.com um, contains uh, not only these lectures or problems, etc., but an entire process, educational process, which you can actually incorporate into your studying uh, because you can enroll or your supervisor can enroll you, your parent can enroll you in any topic. Um, there are or there will be exams for each topic. Some of them are not yet uh, ready, but most of them actually are ready right now. Um, and uh, so the exam will give you a, a very good picture of how you, uh, how well you master the particular, uh, particular topic, particular um, part of this uh, course of mathematics. Well, that's it. Thank you very much, and uh, good luck.